The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. examples I've just uh, scanned them and crossed out some of the names and dates and things like that but they're, they're real examples of our everyday uh, work at the law company so I put this one up last time the life is what happens while you're busy making other plans that's very true so you don't realize that you're getting older and you should be getting some things together uh, through your plan so there's a bunch of things you plan for, but you don't really start to plan for uh, your demise. What do you think of that? Not good? <laughs> I was a bit dubious about putting that one up, but it's, it's quite true. So your plan... Right, I might, I might uh, walk around here because I don't want people seeing my back all, all the time. Now, a living will, it's, uh, it's free. You can um, have one and uh, set one up at the hospital, have it there where you're regular. So if you go to uh, Bangkok Putty Hospital, for example, you can put it on file there or any of the other hospitals. Uh, a living will is insurance and it's quite legal in Thailand and it just makes sure that your wishes are carried out even when you are not conscious enough to make decisions for yourself. So some people say, oh, I don't have any property, I don't have any money in the bank, I don't have any assets but you don't understand that your body is the asset and if you're unconscious in the hospital for some reason the bill is ticking and there's someone that has to look after you and so this is the subject of today's uh, talk of, on living wills so what is a living will and what can go wrong uh, first thing is it's Thai law, so the documents will all be on, in Thai. So if you don't understand what you're signing, then you could have a problem later on. So does anyone have any idea what this is? Any people that aren't Thai? That's the uh, statute number 12 under the Health Act for the Civil and Commercial Code of Thailand. That's what will protect you if you make a living will. That is the translation. So under the CC of CC Code of Thailand, it's under the Health Act and it's recognised as a living will. So it simply states in English that the individual is entitled to make a living will expressing that person's intentions to refrain from receiving medical treatment for the purpose of extending the last days of your life. So 
Uh, does anyone know the difference between this and euthanasia? Yes, exactly. Uh, the other is where you allow things to take their own course and don't mm. have any extraordinary measures. Sure. So euthanasia is when they actually introduce some chemicals into your body and you uh, you can uh, be uh, terminated that way. But with the living will, it's your choice to withhold other equipment and medicines and to get onto the drip with some morphine and pass away in a dignified way. There's a, a number of um, problems here because you have the tire wall, then you have the Hippocratic Oath, which is from the hospital. So I just grab some water. And then you have your religious conviction if you're a religious person. So the Thai statute says you can withhold your machines and vitamins and everything like that that you've signed with a conscious mind. But then you have the Hippocratic Oath from the doctors, which simply states that it's their job to keep you alive in a lot of circumstances. So from my experience, when an accident happens and someone gets raised off to the hospital, the hospital swings into action because the ICU carts arrived. The first thing they started doing is putting in tubes, resuscitation, all that sort of thing, because they don't know you've got a living will. That's their job, that's what they do. But the costs are running there. So if, for example, a friend of mine passed away on January 1, uh, he was brain dead in the ambulance and they still went into action when he got to the hospital until I got there when I told them no you can't do that. This is a, a, a subject that we could debate forever this one with uh, religious convictions and the Hippocratic Oath and things like that but we don't have time today. Oh I come up a bit small. This is a a, a living will draft. Simply, where's my pointer? Here you have, this is mine, my name, okay, and my address and all that sort of thing. And here, it states that I was of, of sound mind when I made it. Uh, I voluntarily did this because I want to not suffer in hospital for various reasons. The only reason this could work is because of these two things here. That you're in a terminal phase of illness, meaning that you, you probably had a history of cancer or something like that, and you don't want to get dragged on for, for a long time with uh, medicine and things like that. That you're suffering from an incurable condition caused by an injury or disease, meaning perhaps like my friend on January 1 who was brain dead, when he got there, but they still did all these things. Um, next part is over here, you have your checklist of what you don't want to happen. Uh, tracheotomy, ventilation, nutrition, hydration, all those sorts of things. This is your choice. You, you don't have to tick all these things. That's your choice. Um, again, it's in Thai and English and each page is signed. Calvin, could yeah. I interrupt? Yeah. You only have one signature there, is that valid? Well, this is sort of like my draft of one, but uh, we'll get to that in a little bit long, uh, Albert. Uh, that'll come up in a section. Here, you've got, that's a problem, that one, the right to die at home. The complication there is, that if you go home to die, um, then you'll need an autopsy. If you die in a hospital, 99% of the time they will issue the death certificate and no autopsy because they know. So be careful when you tick that one. I've left that open and I've ticked that one there because I want 
I want lots of morphine if this ever happens to me. I want to be there on the drip. They wind it up. Now the next part here is your surrogate. Who's the guy that's going to go in there, the, the person that's going to go in there to make sure the hospital takes away all the equipment? Who's that? You better make sure that that's a strong personality to go in there and tell hospital administration that you're going to turn this stuff off. So that person is a good friend of mine in Bangkok uh, who agreed to do it. Don't just put anyone's name there. Uh, here is me on the test date, or so it's a little bit like a will here. And over here is a former power of attorney where my friend has signed this as a surrogate. So that, that makes sure that legally he's the only one that can do this. Over there, Albert, two witnesses. So if you're making this, this living will, you don't have to come to me, you can just go to the hospital, there's a template there, and you put it on your record and it's free. But getting them to enact that is sometimes difficult because you have to come up against the hospital administration and the doctors and they, they will come out and you'll have to have a big meeting about all that. So make sure who you pick is um, a strong personality. So the living will's a form of power of attorney. And then you have a different one. I'll give you an example in a minute. Some of the Americans refer to it as the enduring power of attorney, which is when that person loses their mental capacity, they can take over their business dealings, things like that. But you still need a court order, and that person must be next of kin blood relative, brother, sister, kids, wife, whatever. But you can't go around doing things even though you've got a power of attorney without a court order. Like you couldn't shut a bank account down or something like that. So just be aware of that one. Uh, normal power of attorney. Uh, there's some examples coming up which will make that a lot clearer. There's several kinds of uh, power of attorney. This one is the enduring power of attorney, where, well, I should have made this better, up down here, I'll read it for you, it's in case uh, you're very old, become incompetent person, causing incompetent, you're admitted to hospital for treatment, you're becoming unconscious, demonstrate dementia, etc. So you get, you get the idea here that, oh there we go, that's good. Um, so your custodian or your guardian, which in this case was his son, could carry out his wishes. Now this is not the same as the other power of attorney. This is a very specific power of attorney from these symptoms that go wrong. So everything's dated, everything's in Thai and English. Uh, you witness this like a test data or like a will again. And they're the witnesses, two witnesses. Now this one I use all the time because if something happens, someone passes away here and that person's in another country, they can sign a power of attorney. And this one was from the Czech Republic. So that gives us the right to go to the embassy, pick up the paperwork, release the body, start the cremation, all of that, just through this document. We can go to the embassy and start the ball rolling. Okay? So the, the, the power of attorney is, is confirmed here, that this person can do whatever as if that person who made this power of attorney did it themselves. So when you're signing a power of attorney, you have to understand that you're giving absolute power to someone else to do that task. 
only that task, not everything. So it's in Thai, it's in English. We sent this off to Czechoslovakia and um, they signed it, sent it back. We went to the uh, embassy, got everything done. Specifically for that reason. Now, if you ever see one of these, be careful. I think you should get an attorney for this one. This is to sell your condo or your house. It's a very strong, powerful document. Jeff gets these all the time. Jeff's the director of the company. So this was to sell the condo by proxy, if you like. And that was written in the Netherlands. Okay, so there's Jeff here. And this is the person signing the power of attorney. So that Jeff is the legal and lawful attorney for the purpose of selling the unit. That's good. You sign a piece of paper and someone can sign over your condo. So be careful if you get this one in Thai and you don't know what it is, you're going to lose. <laughs> so when in doubt, just come down and see us, we'll know what it is. All right. So, we go. All right. That's very, very brief what I've done, but we have another speaker coming up, so I know there's questions and things. Um, just about our staff, I'll just quickly run through this. We're tied to play more down there in Jongtian. Some of our staff. We got another one last week, so we must be doing something right. All right. Registered with a DVD, my work, work permit. Could do another talk on that probably in a two or three weeks, friend. We could change the uh, changing the law there. Um, so you can find us on there if you don't know where we are. Just put it into Google and send it to your phone, and that'll take you to our address. That's our newest member of staff, Kay. Bit of a long story there, but. So, yeah, you see this on the last talk with two lawyers, graduates, notaries, five staff now. We do funeral services, all of that, one work permit. So that's my brief talk. I expect some questions and things, and Diana has to do her bit, so I'm not going to push on your time. <laughs> all right. So, uh, question time. I think it's rather important. These uh, these wills are they for a special hospital or for the whole of Thailand? No, the, they're for all of Thailand. It's under the Thai law, under the no, statute. No, but they have to have this at every hospital. Well, I because I, it's in my file, yeah. you said. So, mm. well, you you go to the hospital and you tell them that you'd like to put it on file. But which hospital? That's the problem. So I, I make a copy and I take it to another Yeah, hospital. whatever hospital you're going to, here you've got a copy everywhere. Of the same document? Yeah. Okay. And if, you, if you're actually a member of the Bangkok, if you're part of the Bangkok hospital system, mm -hmm. and they keep it on the computer for all Bangkok hospitals in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it could actually be very important that uh, some person knows which your preferred hospital is mm. so that you can get transferred to that where you have yeah, exactly. the this. Because you don't know when or where this is going to happen. And then, like I said, the, the ambulance arrives, they swing into action and their whole Hippocratic oath things that keep them alive. And they take it to the hospital, they start doing all this stuff in the ER, and that has to be undone if you have a living will. <laughs> Okay, here. The, um, so the reason you're saying that if you go to the hospital and they hook you up with all these machines mm. is because they just want money. No. No? Why? That's, that's their job. They're trying to do that. No, I, I understand. Mm. So, but you need somebody strong, like you said, to say, no, he doesn't want that. Yeah, well, you pull out the living will and you say, can you um, abide by this, please? This was their wishes. And they will say, no, we have to save him, we have to make him comfortable, we have to do this. 
And I've done it several times now. And I said, no, that's not what's going to happen. You take that machine out, you take that plug out, you take this out. Because that's what they wanted when, when they were conscious and they came into my office. They made that living will with a sound mind. So when they had a car accident down the road or a stroke or a hemorrhage or something like that, they, they can't make that decision, but they made that before. And if there's no hope of them surviving, it's only those two clauses which it kicks in. It's only those two parts. The brain dead, incurable um, disease, which is terminal. Maybe they've got two or three weeks left. So why resuscitate someone? It's crazy. Kevin? Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Kelvin. Hi. My understanding of Thai hospitals was if you are taken in there for whatever reason, the first thing you want to know is who's paying sure. before they do any treatment. Absolutely. But I, I can't comment there. <laughs> but you know what it's like. Like I said before, you, you have your asset, which is your body, and people say, I have nothing else. But that asset could land you in the hospital in ICU, maybe 100,000 a day or 100,000 a week. It's got to come from somewhere. Sorry, lady here. Oh, just a minute. Yes, the uh, living will. Stand up, please. When you select somebody to be to the power of attorney on the living will, what about if you have a wife? Can you have a wife override the. No. Under the statute, you nominate that person. And wives aren't the best surrogates, really. <laughs> keep you alive and look at you. That's where I come in. So this is free. You can do this. But if, if you want me to do it, I have to, I have to charge you some money to go down to the hospital and do that. Because I've got to meet with all the administration. Like that. It's only about 3000 baht. Can you tell me who better has a signature than the signature? Who? Where applies your signature? I sign it. Oh, the two witnesses. No, cool. Don't know. no our law company. Pardon? Our company will do that. Oh, the company yeah. can not be any more. Can be, as long as you have the um, passport, ID, signed, attached. Any, anyone can witness anything if they have those documents. But that's enough? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It doesn't have to be legalized. No, 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 no uh, notaries, nothing like that. No, that's enough. It's the same as the will. It's just two signatories, that's all. And the testator are in the same room, same time, same pen. Yeah. Okay, Daryl's gonna give me a curly one, I bet. <laughs> no, not a question. I'm going to uh, say that I did get a power of attorney from you mm. some time ago. And it's very specific, but I've always been concerned that what if I wind up at the hospital and I'm unconscious and we all know that the hospitals will stabilize you, but they're not going to treat you unless you have money up front. And basically what this power of attorney does gives my partner specific power to sign my credit cards, but only for medical treatment. So uh, Kevin's office was good enough to make that up for me, and I had that in the hopes that something did like that happen. If I get to the hospital, he can sign the deposit. And fortunately, I have some health insurance that uh, the hospital will direct bill. So that kicks in once they get the letter from the insurance company. But anyway, a power of attorney is, as Kevin, Kevin mentioned, is very good for certain purposes, but be specific. Very specific. Because if you make it broad, you're giving somebody a hell of a lot of power. Mm -hmm. On your left. How are we going for time, Ren? Kelvin? Yeah. On your left. We're okay for time? Yeah. All right. Tell a story about a power of attorney then. Uh, it, can there be arguments between you, if you're involved, and the medical people, you saying they're brain dead, and they say, no, you're not brain dead. We're the experts. Yes, I did have that uh, problem. <laughs> and what happened? Uh, well, the chap was in ICU, which he shouldn't have been in ICU, and uh, I rang the sister who was in the UK, so the time difference was bad, and good for me, bad for her. And I said, what do you want to do? Is she leave him here or whatever? 
Uh, she said, well, how much is it? I said, oh, here it's about 5,000 or so. But, you know, the prognosis says he's only two or three days, so we'll do that. And then I met with the hospital, but they'd already done a lot of treatment, a lot. So when the bill came, I sat down with administration and I went through the bill and I said, well, you knew what you weren't supposed to do that. You knew you weren't supposed to do that. You can do that. And I put a red line through everything. Uh, okay. Except the ICU, which I agreed to. Okay. So they had to wear the bill because I, I just refused to pay it. Mm. Oh. Yes? I wish I had listened to you before I was selling my boat because <coughs> when I bought the boat, I gave the real estate agent Paul of attorney so he could do all the government stuff and register the boat, and that went fine. Later on, I was going to sell the boat, and I agreed with the, the broker that I would sell for a fixed price, and then I wanted the money in the U.S., and that was unconditionally. But after talking, the next day I went and was going to get on my boat. My boat was gone. And what he had done is he had just unilaterally decided that I wasn't getting my money in the U.S. and signed, and signed the sales for my boat. And my boat was gone. Imagine me walking up to the pier and not finding my boat. Yeah, that's true. I got two minutes ring. Yeah, okay. okay um, it, it, this is a story. It's true. When I was living in Banks Ray, uh, a little bit out of here, um, there was a German chap there who'd been married 30 years, and the scene was like the breakfast table and morning honey and what sort of thing. He's reading the newspaper. She said, "Can you sign all these documents?" And he said, "What are they, honey?" She said, "Well, just for the car registration for the car, all that sort of thing." But there was a Thai power of attorney in there. So about two weeks later, the unit had been sold, the truck, the boat, everything. He had nothing. And he came to see us. And I said, but you signed this. He said, well, I didn't know what it was. So that's what I'm saying. That, that document is really powerful. So if you don't know what it is, don't sign it. Get a trusted third party to have a look at it. It takes a couple of minutes, but it can save. He lost about 30 million on this, so uh, be careful. Mm. So, so, Kelvin, um, they could always stand come. Up, please. Yes, please stand up. <laughs> uh, so, Kelvin, they could always uh, find you, and they absolutely. Can, and if you're a trusted uh, client, if uh, Kelvin's got a translator on call. And you can always, if it's in a hurry, you can always translate it at the, tell you what it costs to translate, translate it for you, bill you later, and all that sort of stuff. He's done, just done some time. translation for me. Mm. Yeah, so it's, uh, you're going to sign something in Thai, and you don't read Thai, think about somebody like Kelvin and his firm, okay? Thank you very much, Kelvin, for a great talking. You give him a week off, and he forgets what we do here. This is you know, what can I do? Uh, one other question is that on a power of attorney, uh, I understood that it's only good for 90 days. Is that, I was involved in a real estate act reaction and they told me 90 days they had to keep renewing it. Yeah, we, we had that the other day, someone came in and they were from Israel and they said, okay, I want to flip this condo. And Jeff looked at the date on the power of attorney, which was from Israel, but it was, uh, it had been through the embassy, so it was all certified. And she said, now if you go up to the land office now and use that, that's it. But we'll wait until you get a buyer. Then we'll use it. So that's the difference. You wait until you need to use it, then you use it. Thank you for being a great audience. Give uh, Calvin a huge round of applause. I actually uh, asked Kelton to give a talk on this, so I really want to acknowledge you and uh, really important.